Hey, what's up guys? DICE has finally given us a bit more detail about update 6.2, which is coming in early December. They went through a bunch of different separate things that we're going to go over in this video. So without further ado, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you to every single person that does that really helps the channel out. And I love you very much. I kiss you directly on your forehead and uh, comment down below what you what you're eating during this video, because that's apparently a tradition now on this channel. And yes, I know you're eating. I can see you. In fact, I'm staring at you right now. Uh, don't look behind yourself. You look foolish. Now then, uh, some of the important changes coming in update 6.2. Again, for people wondering, this update is not out yet. It is coming out in, quote, early December. There is no date. We will know the date uh, as DICE gets details to us, so maybe within a couple days. The first big change that I am very happy to see is the fact that the MCS-880 is getting nerfed. If you remember, the MCS-880 went from probably the worst pump-action shotgun ever in Battlefield history to one of the best pump-action shotguns ever, and now they're nerfing it to probably a middle ground, which it should have started at in the first place. And I'll throw this in here just because I'm feeling spicy today. If you played Pike and spammed smoke grenades and wall hacks with the MCS-880 unredacted, I hope your pillow never gets cold again. The balance tweaks to the 880 include its one-hit kill range will no longer be possible at all uh, over 25 meters, and it will be, quote, far rarer, in their words, to one-hit kill between 20 and 25 meters in general. And lastly, the number four buckshot will have its range reduced to have its intended short-range roll get filled rather than it being the overall best choice uh, for the MCS 880. And before I move on to other changes, I just have to say, I cannot, for the life of me, understand how the 12M auto has avoided getting nerfed for, I think, the entirety of Battlefield 2042, aside from minor changes. The 12M auto needs to be heavily fucking gutted, all right? Like, hey, you're gonna nerf the MCS-880? At least the MCS-880 was slightly harder to use than the 12M auto. The 12M auto, I don't want to see that gun ever again. Like, get away from me if you use the 12M auto. As far as other changes coming in update 6.2, I made a video last week saying that they're going to try to fix the bot lobbies. They're going to try to address some of the hit reg problems. And uh, one of the new things they mentioned today is they'll be adding a, quote, computed impact point for air vehicles, uh, which is apparently going to take into consideration multiple factors that include gravity, velocity, angular velocity, and drag to draw a, quote, impact point for pilots. So judging off of that description, this is how I interpret it. And feel free to correct me in the comment section if I'm misinterpreting this. So say you're using rocket pods on a jet. Are you going to see the trajectory of the rocket pods, like, as you're aiming them? so you can hit them more accurately, or say if you're using the stealth helicopter, is there going to be like a line that comes down from your stealth helicopter that shows you the trajectory of the bombs? Because if that's the case, that's kind of fucking crazy strong. And I know some people had that same interpretation that I had and were already complaining about this change and they don't want it. So we'll have to see how this plays out. This could make jets with rocket pods uh, significantly easier to use. And speaking of being significantly easier to use, in 6.2, they're also planning on adding a, quote, rotational hot icon for the gunners and pilots. So if you remember in Battlefield 4, if you ever flew the attack helicopter, there was a little box at, say, I'd say 6 o'clock on your screen. And it was a little box that showed the pilot where the gunner was looking. And it made it so the pilot could more easily position the gunner so the gunner could accurately get kills. And I have to say, it has always confused me that they have omitted this from Battlefield 2042, and I've always wanted to be yeah, to be in the game, because it makes it so you don't really have to be in comms with your gunner, say if you have a random gunner, and you're just, you know, a random pilot, and you want to fly together. Uh, it makes it easier for you guys to actually be effective. So this is a great change, in my opinion, and I'm uh, happy to see it get implemented. Now, moving on to some comments from the recent Inside Battlefield podcast via Battlefield Bulletin, Quote, DICE says the Nightbird is overperforming a little bit, so they're looking for some, quote, handling updates at some point in the future. This is very perplexing to me, because if I'm being completely honest, I don't know where these mystical, god-tier, 200-0 every single game Nightbird pilots are. I have never seen one, aside from people that I know personally. So it really makes me wonder, are further balance changes actually needed to the Nightbird? And I don't necessarily think so, because in order to go on these crazy kill streaks, which apparently the community has a complete temper tantrum over every single time you talk about the Nightbird, you also have to be extremely good in the Nightbird. 
And the anti-air in Battlefield 2042 is the strongest anti-air ever in the history of Battlefield. And it's not even close. Rauhack mobility disables your vehicle remotely. You don't even have to hit them with a projectile. You can just stare at the helicopter and their, mo their mobility hit. You have unlimited ammo lists TV missiles. You have so flames. You have tracer darts. You have the wildcat is super strong. You have flak. You have all of these separate things. And yet for some reason, people don't seem to be able to kill the nightbird. And I really do believe that it's because people aren't trying to kill the nightbird. And it's like the classic battlefield thing, right? Everyone complains about this certain vehicle, then no one tries to kill the vehicle, right? I think that is what's really happening here. And people are just crying wolf every time a Nightbird kills them, and they want it to be nerfed. Because when people complain about the Nightbird, they make it sound like going on these kill streaks is the easiest thing ever. But then they could not even get the Nightbird off the ground without crashing it immediately. So, I don't know, uh, I think at some point you just have to say, you know what, that pilot is avoiding every single countermeasure very effectively, he's using cover, and he's kicking our fucking ass, right? No one ever says that anymore. So we will have to see what sort of handling updates the Nightbird receives. Uh, this could be very devastating to the Nightbird, as the Nightbird really does need its mobility to stay alive. It is not the tankiest vehicle. If you catch it out in the open with a Wildcat, it really does just get shredded, especially if you hit your shots. Now, before I go on to some other helicopter news, if you're enjoying the content, if you find it informative, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It really does help the videos out. really does help the channel out. Thank you guys for hitting almost 54,000 subs. You guys are just killing it every single video. I genuinely appreciate it. Now, uh, in terms of the other helicopter news, DICE has, quote, no immediate plans to tweak the stealth helicopter. This is fine, in my opinion. I, still th I think the stealth helicopter has gotten really nerfed into the ground. Plus, at this point, the stealth helicopter is list bait. It is so easy to die in a stealth helicopter. Um, I think it's in a fine spot for where it is. And the last thing I'll mention in this video is Liss is finally going to be receiving some tweaks, okay? They have stated that she is, quote, a little too air-focused, and they will be focusing her more on ground targets. I 100% agree with this, um, although I think she's overpowered against ground targets as well. In my opinion, Liss is just fundamentally overpowered. You guys know my opinion on the subject. I've talked about it a lot. Liss should not be in the game. There is a reason why TV missiles have been reserved traditionally for vehicles in Battlefield games, and that is because you know what vehicle has a TV missile, okay? When you see a helicopter, you know it can have a TV missile. As an infantry, you can just hide behind things. It has unlimited ammo that regenerates. It's just fundamentally overpowered. It makes it too easy to spam things, too easy to hit targets. And in my opinion, it really does perpetuate a very shitty gameplay style, uh, similar to the Battlefield 4 UCAV, where you sort of hide and then just sort of get cheap kills from your spawn, and then of course people stream snipe with lists. It generally just creates a lot of problems, and I'm happy to see DICE uh, address some of these. So that is going to do it for this video, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed the content, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Instagram, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. All links are in the description. I'm talking really fast. Goodbye.